In this video, we will describe idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and take a look at the research done in this field by breaking down the clinical trial process. What is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? Idiopathic means of unknown cause, pulmonary means pertaining to the lungs, and fibrosis means the scarring of something. To break it down into simpler terms, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the scarring of the lungs with an unknown cause. There is a weak foundation of knowledge revolving the disease currently, however a lot of research is being conducted to understand which steps can be taken to cure it. For patients, navigating the complex world of medical research can be daunting, so we want to simplify and break down the current research related to IPF. To start off, we must first talk about why research is created. Research for becoming integrated with medicine in the market is very complex and takes time. We are going to follow one of the IPF drugs as it heads through the various stages of the clinical trial process. Espriot, also known as perfinidone, is a drug that is currently used as a treatment for IPF. This drug helps to reduce lung tissue scarring and also decreases inflammation. We are going to use this drug as our model for how research on IPF drugs is done. It is important to note that prior to drug testing on humans in clinical trials, the drug is tested extensively in a preclinical phase involving laboratory studies and tests on animals, which demonstrate that the experimental drug is considered safe and effective. However, no animal is sufficiently similar to humans, even those that are genetically modified, to make human testing unnecessary. For this reason, the experimental drug must also be tested on humans. Clinical trials are divided into four phases. Each phase has a specific goal and has very specific characteristics. The overall process is very capital intensive and many drugs, especially in the field of respirology, fail to become approved. In the first phase, known as phase one, perfinidone is tested first for safety. The trial is run on a small group of people and the goal is to determine drug safety by assessing safe range for doses and identifying side effects. The length of phase 1 studies are typically several months long. In this phase 1 test, perfinidone was tested on 44 patients with one dose. The study found that the drug was safe and that they could move on to phase 2 testing. In this case, perfinidone was tested against the placebo. However, it is often more common to test a new drug against current conventional treatments available for the disease. Phase 2, the drug is given to a larger group of people to gain some early data on effectiveness. There's also a movement towards finding the best dose and researchers continue to look and assess the drug's safety. The length of a phase 2 study can span several months up to 2 years. A phase 2 study conducted in China with 160 patients was designed to evaluate the efficacy and safety of perfinidone in patients with IPF through observations of many real cases. In phase 3, the drug is given to an even larger group of people, usually around 1,000 or more. Researchers want to confirm the effectiveness of the drug, monitor side effects, compare it to the most common treatments, and collect information that will allow the drug to be safely used in the market. The length of a study for phase 3 clinical trials is usually 1 to 4 years long. A phase 3 trial conducted on 555 patients determined that perfinidone reduced disease progression in patients with IPF, showing promising results as a treatment for IPF. Phase 4, also known as the post-marketing surveillance trials, occurs after the drug has entered the market. Pharmaceutical companies have several objectives at this stage, including to compare a drug with other drugs already in the market, to monitor the drug's long-term effectiveness, an impact on patients' quality of life, and to determine the cost-effectiveness of a drug therapy relative to other traditional and new therapies. The length of a study for phase 4 clinical trials can be the same as that for phase 3 clinical trials or even longer. Phase 4 studies can result in a drug or device being taken off the market or restrictions of use can be placed on the product depending on the findings of the study. Perfinidone is currently in its fourth stage of clinical trials and is utilized as a common treatment for IPF. The field of clinical research can be very confusing. There are a lot of nuances and information can get muddled very easily. However, clinicaltrials.gov is a useful resource to look at the many different clinical trials available for IPF patients. It shows all the clinical trials done on a specific drug, as well as more information on start and end dates and the number of patients involved. 
IPF is a chronic and progressive disease associated with a high burden of disease and early death. That is why IPF diagnoses takes a toll on patients who may feel hopeless. However, the pathophysiological understanding, clinical diagnostics, and therapy of IPF have significantly evolved in recent years. While the recent introduction of two antifibrotic drugs, perfenidone, which was outlined in this video, as well as nintidineb, have led to significant reduction in lung function decline due to their anti-inflammatory and antifibrotic effects, there is still no cure for IPF, thus new therapeutic approaches are still needed. Currently, several clinical trials, phases 1 to 3, are focusing on novel therapeutic targets. Here is a list of various drugs at different stages of the clinical trial process. Cotrimoxazole, or doxycycline, is a drug that is in phase 3 trials and has demonstrated effectiveness in treating infections issues associated with IPF. To learn more information about the individual drugs, please visit clinicaltrials.gov. Scientific breakthroughs continue to change the outlook on IPF and to tackle the different issues associated with the disease. Furthermore, new approaches in non-pharmacological treatments in palliative care, pulmonary rehabilitation, lung transplantation, and the management of comorbidities, also known as the presence of multiple diseases, aims to improve symptom control and quality of life of patients diagnosed with IPF. We hope that this video has provided an outlook on IPF and has clarified the clinical trial process. Thank you for watching.